ตาเกเจเนลอมานรวรติเกสิเนเชมเบยิเกนโรโซเยลากุงเกปัตตะวะริกเบโตเจชาวลังเกชาอันสารายปันเตสะเวลามารัมโมเจตะเกเจวรเ
ขาดอ่าขาดเต็มไปจ้าเป็นมันทนรอรบเจวางกิจอบเป็นเยลอยู่เตยงสาวานี้เอ็มมาอืมชื่อทิ้งชอบจันทบเซมเดนเป้นั
Then Tetra Yonti, then Bisha, two Kunda Chuji Kutisha, and then Yanam covered them by ye, you have some temo them by ye, Lord and you chula call and though come here by Jabber, and they're going to two Jasse Chanju Sambato, Slome Dodon Chuji go, and then Madame Kandu Sansi, Nave Yola Yela Song. Yawan Mandor, Cardinum, Yin Kala Jobeton Chene, Yum Yishin Daki Long Temba, Monk Hundred Bomb Jasoni, Padding the Chancho Semnam Jim, Monk Hundred Concho, Mazuba, Tom Thunder Pema Wangisha, so that I judge the Bando, Jay. Ojin and Boche, Herokai, Chalu, Jinche, Tello, Ted C. Yangala, most some babo. The Jin Yama Tongo, the Bashin, and they were champion Yamna than Bawos. To finish up the uh, first of the six parts of the uh, main practice. Uh, continuing in the uh, liturgy, uh, it says, um, His grand lotus crown, which liberates through being seen, displays the completeness of the nine vehicles. Brilliant, he emits the light of a thousand suns. Now, uh, the first part of this is the um, significance of the uh, lotus crown and how its appearance um, as shown in the, the painting, which is up there, which is uh, which you probably can't, if your eyes, unless your eyes are a lot better than mine, you can't really make out much of it. But anyway, um, how its appearance uh, represents the qualities of each of the nine vehicles or nine yanas, which make up the Buddha's complete teachings. The commentary says, to expand upon the meaning of his crown which displays the completeness of the nine vehicles. This is the crown prophesied by Guru Rinpoche, Guru Padmasambhava, while in the form of a heruka in the celestial realm of Akanishta. The root text of the treasure containing this prophecy of the precious crown of power, the grand lotus crown that liberates through being seen, is as follows. So this is Guru Rinpoche's prophecy of Techambhava Dorje uh, and the crown uh, that he uh, wears. Emma, there will be a yogin of the supreme vehicle who possesses bodhicitta and engages in being's benefit. Without selfishness, pretense, or imposture, he will possess the dharma of sixfold liberation. Sixfold liberation means liberation through being seen, heard, thought of, touched, uh, liberation through taste and liberation through wearing. In order to accomplish authentic benefit for others, inspire faith and devotion in his disciples, change negative attitudes toward him, and skillfully increase his activity of benefiting beings, he will wear the lotus crown that liberates through being seen. It will be round in shape and orange in color as a sign of the Pratimoksha's Vinaya. He will, like a Pratyeka Buddha, perfectly realize interdependence. He will be both as solitary as a rhino's horn and as social as a parrot. There are two types of Pratyeka Buddhas, those that live in isolation. They're compared to the uh, horn of the Asian rhino only has one horn, um, the African rhino, uh, has two, so it represents the Asian rhino. And the other type live in groups, so they're called the parrot or the parrot flock. Like So he will sometimes be as solitary as a rhino's horn and sometimes as social as a parrot. He will be learned in the Pratyeka Buddhayana. It, the crown, will be decorated by jewels as a sign of his benefit to others through the causal paramitas, generosity, moral discipline, and so forth. It will have a high and empty peak or hollow peak as a sign of his achievement of his own benefit through holding the middle ways view and meditation in his heart. 
It will have ear flaps and hanging ribbons as a sign that he will never abandon any being in his heart and that he will always hold all his mothers in his compassion. So thus far is how the hat, rep the crown represents the three uh, vehicles of the sutras, now the six vehicles of uh, Tantra. The gathered clouds of compassion, these are clouds, the, the, there's the uh, image of clouds on the, on the, the uh, crown. The gathered clouds of compassion will rain down the purifying water of the Kriya path, the path of Kriya Tantra. The piping of five colors, so you know, everyone knows what piping is on the edge of a, yeah, will represent the Upa Yoga or Charya Tantra, a combination of the two means of view and conduct. The petals in the four directions represent the four seals, a sign of his possession of the view and meditation of outer yoga. The four seals in Yoga Tantra refer to the four elements of the generation of the deity. The crown's five colors are a sign of the clarity of inner maha yoga. The shape of a lotus with a vajra peak in its center is a sign of anu yoga's unity of means and knowledge. The full moon as an ornament represents the mind class of the great perfection. The supreme disk of the sun represents the brilliant expanse class. And the crown's blue center represents primordially pure samantabhadra. The silk ribbons of five colors are a sign of the path of breakthrough and the four appearances of leapover perfected as the four vijadara fruitions, the realization of the spontaneously present great perfection. The vulture feather at the crown's peak is a sign that the fruition of the king of vehicles has been revealed. This crown represents the accomplished five bodies of Buddhahood. Anyone with samadhi and compassion who wears it will purify the obscurations of all who see them. Their five poisons will be tamed, their bad karma purified. In this body, they will have long lives without illness. Their splendor, merit, fame, and wealth will increase. Seeing this crown dispels adversity and obstacles. Through this crown's blessing, the three roots, the gurus, yadams, and dakinis, will gather like clouds. The mother Dakinis and those with Samaya, which means the Dharma protectors, will circulate like dust in a storm. This crown closes the door to bad migrations and opens the way to liberation. Even an animal that sees it will be liberated. This crown of the victors, which liberates through being seen, will benefit all connected to you. Always venerate and respect this crown that possesses such qualities. All who encounter it are fortunate. Through good intentions, faith, and devotion, occupy your being with dharma. This skillful means of the victors, the Buddhas, will be accomplished by their child, a bodhisattva. It is an infallible dharma gate, an entrance or, or a means of access to dharma that will benefit beings. These are the secret words of the mothers and dakinis. Listen to these words and remember them. Don't forget their meaning, fortunate ones. As prophesied by the mother, the wisdom dakini, in the celestial city of the expanse, this crown is the vital support of a hundred thousand mother dakinis. The glorious vijadras and bodhisattvas have placed all the mother dakinis in dharma by means of this powerful lotus crown that liberates through being seen. Do what they did. This was actually said by Guru Rinpoche in the attire of a heruka on the 25th day of the monkey month in a monkey year. Uh, we are now in the, on the 10th, uh, we're just after the 10th day of the monkey month in a monkey year. The next line, the last line in the first part is brilliant, he emits the light of a thousand suns, represents that he is luminous with the wisdom and demeanor of great bliss. <laughs> Tower 
The um, second part of the main practice is the affixing of the seal of empowerment. And this occupies a single line uh, in the uh, liturgy, which says, he possesses the three vajras and the empowerments of all five families. The commentary says, the second part, the empowerment, he, clearly imagined in that way, possesses the three vajras, a white om at the forehead, in nature the body vajra, a red a ah at the throat, in nature the speech vajra, and a blue hum at the heart, in nature the mind vajra. Because his five aggregates, form, sensations, perceptions, mental formations, and consciousness, five poisons, uh, ignorance, attachment, uh, hatred, pride, and jealousy, and five elements, uh, earth, water, fire, air, and uh, space, have all been purified in their own places. The seeds of the five fathers and five mothers are clearly present at the five places on his head. So the seed syllables of the uh, five male and female Buddhas of the five families are present above his head, uh, as is the case uh, with, uh, in the most deity practices of this tradition. From them, from those syllables, flows a stream of Amrita, Bodhicitta, the five wisdoms. This purifies the stains of the aggregates and elements and bestows the complete empowerments of all five supreme families. The third part of the main practice is the invitation, but actually there is no invitation. The uh, section that in most practices would be an invitation here occupies the next two lines in the liturgy, which, which say, he personifies the all-pervasive and is beyond coming and going. In his immaculate kindness, he is as vividly clear as the moon in water. The, so in that way, your guru, Vajradhara, personifies or embodies all victors or Buddhas. He is the all-pervasive lord of all things of samsara, nirvana, and the path. So therefore, his body and speech are the rupakaya and the samaya sattva. Rupakaya means form body. 
So therefore, his body is nirmanakaya, body of emanation, and his speech is sambhogakaya, body of complete enjoyment. As well, uh, his body and speech are the samaya sattva, the imagined deity. His mind is the dharmakaya, the jhana sattva. His mind, which is uh, automatically present wherever he is thought of, is the actual the wisdom deity itself. They, the Samaya Sattva and Jana Sattva, are inseparable and therefore beyond the, the attributes or characteristics of coming and going. He is beyond coming and going because in his state of omniscience, he um, sees all beings. So therefore, when anyone thinks of him, he is present there because he is aware of that person. In other words, although we can't see him, he can see us. Therefore, it says, however, he kindly appears wherever he is imagined by those with devotion, like the reflection of the moon in water. If the, if the moon is, uh, for example, the full moon is present in the sky, then without the moon coming or going, any body of water that can uh, will reflect it automatically. He's like that. As he is immaculately free from impairments, violations, and stains, imagine him to be vividly and brilliantly clear. ตกวันนัมบัสมสิยอเรสเปนะชุกุนดาวะจินนะตะขอรังชุกุตุนิกะรังกิเดเตยินตุกัปสลาตินิเตลาอะขอรังตุนิเจวะเรสเซวะตา
ฟาร์มาเจปาลเพดเดงเจเรมาตอเจเกปามาปันเดตาเซมเยกตอนชะตามาเซวาเรคุเนกตอนเซทอนยับยุชิมโบโซตะโบเซยาวาเรสังเก
Now, the uh, I think it would be good, Rameshe said, to clarify something here about the uh, the three bodies of Buddhahood or the Trikaya. It said that uh, all three bodies of Buddhahood are permanent or lasting, but in three different ways. The Dharmakaya's uh, permanence uh, lies in the fact that it is unborn. Uh, it never uh, started. The Sambhogakaya's permanence consists of the fact that it is unceasing. And the Nirmanakaya's permanence is the fact that it is continuous. The Dharmakaya is what we otherwise refer to as emptiness, the nature of all things. The nature of all things, the nature of our minds, is Dharmakaya. And that nature, that Dharmakaya, never started. It never began. Whatever it is, it has always been. Now something that begins or starts must and will come to an end. Something that never begins or starts can never end. The Sambhogakaya, the body of complete enjoyment, is unceasing in its possession of five attributes that are called the five certainties of the Sambhogakaya. And these are certain 
a body, the Sambhogakaya itself, certain place, the highest uh, pure realm, certain dharma that always teaches the Mahayana and Vajrayana, a certain uh, time it is uh, lasting until samsara is empty or over, and certain entourage or retinue. The entourage or retinue of the Sambhogakaya is always only uh, bodhisattvas uh, on the ten uh, bhumis or levels. The Nirmanakaya's permanence is in its continuity. Nirmanakaya is constantly reappearing uh, in the form primarily of intentional uh, rebirth. Now the Dharmakaya is what a Buddha is. The Sambhogakaya and Nirmanakaya, which are referred to in our commentary as collectively as the Rupakaya, the form bodies, are displays for the benefit of others. The reason for these displays is that wherever there is space, there are beings. Wherever there are beings, there are kleshas, mental afflictions. And wherever beings have mental afflictions, they are suffering. We can actually trace the rupakayas or form bodies of a Buddha back to their initial generation of bodhicitta when they first entered the path. They generate bodhicitta by saying, I will achieve Buddhahood for the benefit of others. Bodhicitta is unique among motivations in that it has a dual focus. The wisdom of bodhicitta is that it is focused on the achievement of perfect awakening. The compassion of bodhicitta is that it is focused on the benefiting, the liberation of all beings. So no one has ever achieved Buddhahood for selfish reasons. No one has achieved Buddhahood with the motivation, I will achieve Buddhahood so that I can be a Buddha. The only way you can achieve Buddhahood is with the motivation of wishing to help others by doing so. So therefore, when someone becomes a Buddha, the Dharmakaya automatically, naturally, displays the Sambhogakaya and Nirmanakaya. To understand the Nirmanakaya, it may be helpful to use one of the most illustrious examples of it, the Jawan Karmapa. Throughout the last 900 years, which we recently commemorated several years ago, the successive karmapas from the first up to the present 17th have demonstrated uh, reappearance, rebirth among us. So the karmapa continues to reappear, to take rebirth intentionally in order to help others. It's never been the case that in any of his lives, the karmapa has um, stopped helping others and instead gone into business or something like that. <laughs> His only reason for being born is to help others. Now, in the case of the Kamapa, because he uses the same title or has used the same title uh, since the uh, 11th century, it's easy uh, for, well, really the 12th, but the 12th century, it's easy for us to think of him as a one continuous, continuous uh, incarnation line. But there are countless other Nirmanakayas, some of whom may not retain the same title or, or name uh, lifetime after lifetime. Whether they are like the Jawan Karmapa and keep the same title in their successive incarnations or do not, they are born uh, intentionally, solely, uh, to help uh, others. Now, both the Sambhogakaya and Nirmanakaya 
exist in order to help others. The difference is that the only beings that can uh, experience or see a Buddha's Sambhogakaya are bodhisattvas. So therefore, we need nirmanakayas because we can't, uh, we don't have access to Sambhogakayas. So those are the three kayas of Buddhas. But if you ask, do only, is it the case that Buddhas alone possess the three kayas? No. In his superior continuum, Maitreya wrote, Sugata Garbha, Buddha nature, is present in each and every being. Therefore, each and every being is capable of Buddhahood. According to the Mahayana, all beings possess the fundamental nature, the fundamental potential to achieve Buddhahood. But in fact, in the Vajrayana, we go further. We say that the uh, three bodies of Buddhahood are not something that we possess in potential. We possess them in their entirety. They are utterly innate. Our true nature is Buddha. So what are we? If we say our nature is Buddha, that means that we are Buddhas. So why do we have these problems? We are what we could call afflicted or obscured Buddhas. The difference between us and Buddhas is that we do not recognize our own nature. Because we don't recognize our own nature, we mistake that which is not a self to be a self. Therefore, we mistake that which is not other to be other. And because of that, we give rise to attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, and delusion. So we are like the sun behind clouds. Buddhas are like the sun in the blue sky. But like the sun behind clouds, our true nature is hidden or concealed. But it is not really polluted or mixed with our afflictions. On a cloudy day, the clouds are not within the sun. They are between us and the sun. In the same way, our afflictions are not intrinsic to our nature. They are extrinsic. Our nature itself, while concealed by these veils, has not changed, will not change, and cannot change. So the special feature of the Vajrayana view is the recognition that all of the attributes of Buddhahood are already present within us, merely concealed. And this is important to understand because we need to know what we are praying for in the practice of Guru Yoga. When we pray to our guru, we are not asking, please give me what I don't have. We are asking, through your compassion, kindly grant me your blessings so that my true nature may be revealed to me. If the qualities and attributes of Buddhahood, the Trikaya, were not innate within us, no one could give them to us. But because they are innate within us, someone can point them out to us. And that is what we are trying to bring about in our practice of Guru Yoga. Therefore, this realization 
this revelation or exposure of our true nature cannot be achieved through learning, <laughs> conceptual understanding, or scholarship. Therefore, Guru Rinpoche said, if this is not realized, even the greatest pundit is merely deluded. For example, as Minjo Rinpoche spoke of on Tuesday, the great pundit Naropa, the uh, presiding pundit of the Northern Gate of Nalanda University, still, who had learned all of the facts of Buddhism, still needed to seek out his guru, Talopa, in order to gain an authentic realization. So this realization, this exposure of our own true nature to ourselves, depends on faith, not on learning. And it depends upon faith because it is not something that can be communicated through words. It is not a matter of information. Words can only convey information, and this is not information. As described by Lord Marpa in one of his realization songs, I've experienced it like a mute tasting sugar. A person who cannot speak tasting sugar knows the taste. They will always recognize that taste, but they can't describe it. In fact, none of us can really describe sugar. We can just say it's sweet, but try to describe sweet. You can't describe sweet. But we all know what it tastes like. In the same way, this can be, gain this can be realized only through direct experience, and that comes only through faith and devotion. On the other hand, once this is realized, even if a thousand Buddhas were to appear before you, you would not have a single question to ask them. So therefore, understand that what we are seeking here is a realization or recognition of that which is innate within us. We are not trying to add something to or otherwise improve our basic nature. ตาตุกสิงเกตนะมะนะสบายอดิสิงอนะทานะกิคราเมสเซจิกตุกยอดิโลบโลบกิตุยุยันดาวมันบอยอดิสิงสัมมายินชุตุกยอดิเนมันด
ペナンディナナヒダヨクセマメミキャチョンダキンドカルミキャナワスソンドワスラマラニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニニ
he is as vividly clear as the moon in water. The reflection of the moon appears wherever there is a reflective surface. Refle the reflective surface of water here is an analogy for the faith uh, of uh, the disciple. So in spite of the distance between the water and the moon, the moon will be reflected. And when a nirmanakaya is withdrawn, we say it is withdrawn back into the dharmakaya, like the withdrawal of the sun's rays or light when the sun sets, what's really happening is like the disappearance of a reflection of the moon. The moon itself is not changing. What happens is that the circumstances on the ground, the presence of a reflective body of water or other reflective surface, have changed, and so the reflection disappears. Therefore, the culmination of this path, ultimately, is the mixing of one's mind and that of one's guru, so that one comes to remain or abide in that state of their non-duality through recognition uh, of that their indivisible nature. You are able? Lari Shiba. Ivane Teta la so sacun so sacun do sang young and you're not dumb bumper what they say young Randicke Lama you two Malupa awesome dumb drum maybe Georgie he look at you they say young Teta shy dumber Hingedoma, <laughs> Che yola che yona zongzin yese mebe yi yu to mai pa ngosem megi yu to nawe che ying nongha tongba nang ying nang wazir tasam sang ying jana ma je ke dangkor nam ying nambara tape doma Tigle tombe doma nyamik pup da so tang tap jeda chananke tende ni do jumba lune rani yishi ladan lamengo dorji loguju onsum mekar nawala rajonge tebek jachapurwa stati chansavate. Tetara chuny mo sumne nyana compelige rumba chuny mo sumne nyana compelige rumba chujan chuje the tabak in chobat in yibat che jazz tele ochem koso jazz tele ochem koso che somba the menrambo was sumbat che Rigba chigu tile nya chigin kone reme cholong de trawa mato pe nyeje shakba te che nang si tom chik koda shinkam rangi se le pepal dusha burwa che kon de lam sam je chenang pardo so rana tom chik pana choda riso ma shi pengando she go to some da trava, yokes the watch, a rang sal, londe chimbi chunkur, londe jim michi bar, cova dung, chuny, dawa maple, londe, chuji, trope semasam ki yene, matuba, sebe chel, mikpa, maybe, ge, gebe, taba, thumb ye kanza. Rajin kun, no me sama, 
The uh, fourth part of the main practice is the uh, offering of the uh, seven or eight branches of accumulation and purification. First of all, the difference between the seven or eight branches is the eighth branch is if in before um, uh, homage or prostration, usually the first branch, there is sometimes the branch of invitation. So you say, please uh, come before me so that I can offer you the seven branches, in which case it's eight. Now in his um, summary or, or of what he's going to, of, in his summary division into headings of the practice, Techenbawe Dorji writes the eight branches uh, in the commentary, but now he calls them the seven branches. And so if we look at it, um, it, it is basically seven. Uh, meeting and saluting is one, uh, offerings are the second, confession is the third, um, then prostration, no, actually it is eight, because uh, prostration is separate from, or bowing is separate from salutation. And then um, the request to remain, the request that the Dharma Chakra be turned, and the dedication of virtue uh, are all the same. So in this case, the eighth is that he's divided the uh, homage or prostrations into two, one at the beginning, where it's called prostration or salutation, and or greeting, and then the other, and then later there's one that's called uh, bowing. But essentially, they're usually the same. Now, th this liturgy is a little bit tricky to understand because it uses the unique terminology of the very secret class of the great perfection. To explain it in great detail would basically require a direct and practical uh, instruction uh, in the uh, practice of leapover, which is what this uh, terminology is all about, which is not something that is going to happen right now. So, and also it would take you about, we would have to stay here for a month to um, go through the, the necessary instruction. But in any case, uh, the, what you're doing here is you're performing the seven branches or eight branches as usual, but using the terminology the unique terminology of the great perfection, so that they become an aspiration uh, to realize uh, and practice and realize those teachings. So the, um, the first branch, the branch of greeting or salutation prostration is, through the interdependent means of the six outer and inner lamps, I meet you and salute you in united expanse awareness. So offer him, the guru, the seven branches of accumulation and purification that contain all means of gathering the accumulations. Without leaving the guru of self-awareness as a merely imaginary object, encounter him directly and without separation as the Vajra wisdom chains. The chitta lamp, not chitta as in a big cat, but chitta as in mind or heart, the chitta lamp of flesh is the vessel of your heart, the abode of deities. The smooth white lamp of channels is the path through which wisdom passes, the channel the, from the heart to the eyes. As those channels end in the apertures of your eyes, those apertures are the gates in which wisdom appears, the distant 
I can't say this word without a Canadian accent. Lasso, lariat, is you say, you actually say lasso, I say lasso. Lasso, lasso, really? Okay, it just sounds wrong. Anyway, the distant lasso lamp of water. These are the three lamps inside your body. The external appearances of wisdom, undifferentiated into subject and object, appear directly to your eyes and are not mere objects of mental speculation. The first of these is the pure lamp of the expanse. This includes the external expanse, empty space, the internal expanse, colorful light rays, and the secret expanse, dark green like the circles on a peacock's tail. The empty lamp of drops includes those like fish eyes, like shields, and so forth. Through the application of interdependent means employing those outer and inner lamps, the lamp of self-aware wisdom, the sixth, which abides within your body as in and is in nature the deity and guru indivisible, will appear directly to your eyes as the Vajra chains. Meeting this with self-arisen faith and devotion, salute it in united expanse awareness. So that's the meaning of the first branch uh, salutation or prostrations. The second branch, the branch of offering, has two parts, for offerings in general and the mandal offering. I offer you the appearance of increasing experience. I offer you the mandala of rainbow rays, drops, and light bodies. After experiencing manifest dharmata in that way, offer the appearance of increasing experience without differentiating between the presentation and the present. Offer the mandala of clusters of rainbow rays, drops, light mansions, and bodies. So in other words, the first branch, the branch of prostration, is correlated with the first level of leap over practice manifest dharmata, the second branch offering with the second level, which is called increasing experience. The third branch is the branch of confession, I confess infractions of the single per pervasive nature. Confess the infraction of not realizing that awareness alone is the single pervasive drop or sphere or nature of samsara and nirvana beyond division or partiality. And then next we have, I bow to the great maturation of bodies and realms. Uh, this additional uh, branch, sort of a second greeting or prostration branch, here is correlated with the third level of leap over practice, maturation of awareness. Bow to the great maturation of all that appears and all that exists as bodies, Buddha bodies, and realms. And then the next branch is the request that Buddhas and Bodhisattvas or the Guru remain and not pass into Parinirvana. I pray that you remain in great undifferentiated self-appearance. Pray that the guru remain throughout the three times beyond coming and going in the state of great undifferentiated samsara, nirvana, and path. Undifferentiated now, the future, and the bardo, and undifferentiated self-appearance, all of it beyond acceptance and rejection. The next branch is the request that the uh, Dharma Chakra uh, be turned. I ask you to turn the Dharma Chakra of spontaneous presence beyond the intellect. Ask that the great self-illuminating Dharma Chakra beyond the intellect be spontaneously and ceaselessly turned. And then the final branch is the dedication and aspiration. I dedicate virtue in the expanse of dharmata's exhaustion, so correlating that seventh branch with the fourth and final level of leap over practice, the exhaustion of dharmata. Through this virtue, may I traverse the four vijadara stages. May all samsara and nirvana be liberated in the youthful vas body. In order to exhaust all the primordially non-existent dharmas of conceptual bewilderment, in the great all-pervasive expanse of dharmata, dedicate unconceptualized virtue to the traversal of the four vijadara stages by all merely imputed individuals, you and all others. This is the aspiration that all beings traverse the stages of the fully matured, 
life mastery, and Mahamudra Vidyadras, and quickly achieve the unity of the Dramakaya and Rupakaya, the youthful vase body, and transcend the limits of samsara and nirvana, utterly liberated from all bondage. So we're going to stop here uh, for the, with the instruction for this afternoon. If you'd like to ask any questions, you've got uh, a bit more than 45 minutes. Yes? You need to use the mic. But we won't tell you. But you need to use it. Don't give her the mic. Okay. No. Two. Oh, now. Two. Okay. Um, I, got, oh! <laughs> I got lost um, in the part about the lamps on page 251. Um, the, the you mean the names of the lamps? Yeah. Okay. Is that part? Some lot not bigger than lamps. Is that part of the leap over stuff that we're not going to talk about? Well, yeah, but I mean, I can tell you the names. Uh, the I really want to know what they mean. Oh, you want to know what they mean? Yeah. Well, um, no. Okay. <laughs> well, I have more questions. Um, <laughs> at the very beginning, you talked about how Buddhists see everything we see. Mm -hmm. In Precious Essence, there were descriptions of things that the first um, Barway Dorje saw that I've never seen in my lifetime. So I'm assuming <laughs> that Buddhists see what we see, but they also see more. Is that correct? Yep. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rinpoche. Along those same lines, or around the same time you were talking about that, you also said... I think Buddhas experience past, present, and future as the present. And could you elaborate on that, please? <laughs> Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you can you say a little more? De kanda re sanje ke nyam nyong de de pa ya de pa dan da ta da ma on ba sam. Pe na ta te te kora ke tan ke dure na da wo te tende ke pe na ta so jo so yo mo ka sa da le la wo tong de. No sir. Pe na ma on pa de pe ke ka la. Pe na sanje ke Koi <laughs> Uh, Sanye can debug a couple of coy yawa tapa the madab, Kaseji yabate, Yonzote, Corason yore. Oh, Tatana yinge Tata will call him Magoari Cogan, Coranga, Tahi story, Yoyo Cavari. Mao Panda watch a yena attending under Congon Shina Pen along the Gatam Jacky Jela Seneta, a Coran to change Jacho that ten nineteen in Gordon Bochet and Dondo Kanga Pavio. Look 
Um, we can infer that this is how Buddhas experience everything because of um, accounts, uh, many accounts in the Vinaya, which is a, a tremendous resource for anecdotes about the Buddha's life and teaching. And in other sutras, uh, we can infer that Buddhas uh, see everything that ever was, is, or ever will be anywhere, all the time, all at once. As for describing how this is, it's utterly beyond what we can imagine. We can't even think of two things at the same time, let alone actually see absolutely everything all the time, all at once, and at every moment. We can infer that Buddhas do from, for example, the Buddha's descriptions in the Vinaya and elsewhere of 500 previous pure lives, 500 previous impure lives, and the detailed description that he gave of his own previous lives and of those of others makes it evident that he saw these things at the moment he was speaking as clearly as something placed in the palm of his hand. We can't even remember what we did yesterday. But a Buddha can evidently remember things they did billions and trillions of years before. Um, a good source for anecdotes of this type is the sutra called The Meeting of a Wise Man and a Fool, which Rimshe said has been translated into English. Uh, so I guess it has. I don't, I don't know. And, you know, the Buddha described his previous lives, like, for example, the hundred lives described in the uh, writings of the third Karmapa Rangjun Dorje. He also talked about things going on elsewhere at the present, at the time he was speaking, and uh, made predictions, detailed prophecies of the future. In, and so have other enlightened individuals. And for example, Guru Rinpoche, while in Tibet, uh, predicted each of the karmapas and made it clear what they would do, what their, you know, gave them their names, but also indicated what their particular style of activity would be. Guru Rinpoche also predicted all of the treasure revealers and future events, um, ecological problems, political problems, um, and many uh, sick, new sicknesses and so on. And um, so it's evident that he, like the Buddha, he could see everything, past, present, and future, all at once. And then Rimshe said that, incidentally, the, all of these, the, so many uh, tertans keep on appearing that uh, in the last couple of years at uh, Yachin, a monastery in uh, uh, Sichuan, part of, in the Tibetan part of Sichuan, which is most of it, I think, or a lot of it. Um, they have a collection of, uh, it's not only new tamas, but it's the tamas that are not included in the rich and terzo, or many of them. And it's called the great uh, dharma treasury of new tamas, primarily. And it's, so far, it's up to more than 400 volumes. Thank you. Uh, thank you again for the teaching, Rinpoche. That's a little bit loud. Um, I had a couple quick questions. Uh, you went through a list of, of things. There was like a dark red cloak, which was uh, overpowering all that appeared and exists. Mm -hmm. 
um, a dark blue cloak, which subdues the haughty. Then I couldn't quite get what the saffron robe was, or and then there was the approach killer in the belt, what the symbolism was that. It says. Um, oh, it says in the text? Yeah. Okay. It says, uh, because all his qualities are fully developed, he wears the dark red brocade cloak of empowering all that appears and exists, the dark blue coat of subduing the Hati through forceful mantra, the saffron dharma robe of leading the six types of beings to peace and happiness, the green belt of activity that tames beings, and an approach kila of meteoric iron in his belt is a sign that he has attained the power of force that liberates the vicious. If you look at, do you have a copy of Precious Essence? So look at the front cover, because sure. that has a, that's based on this uh, painting uh, by uh, Wendy Harding, and you can see all of this depicted there. And then the other one was, kind of, uh, so the other killer with the wheel? Yeah. Is that like, is there, how does that look? Is the, that in the tanka? Or? The, the it's a, it's a killer, but the top, instead of the uh, three faces or anything like that, it's got a wheel. And it's usually shown as a dharma wheel, not like a sharp uh, wheel. Okay. But it represents the Manjushri. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and the last one, you know, I, I hear a lot about Guru Rinpoche had a lot of prophecies and things like that. Is there any good resource to read them, or are they not public knowledge type thing? Have you read the Hundred Tertans? Been working through it, pieces of it. Okay, well, that's okay. one place. Then uh, any of the books that, that about Guru Rinpoche will have some of them. There's no, there's no encyclopedia of Guru sure. Rinpoche's prophecies at this point. I wanted to ask you, Rinpoche, if you would digress for a moment from the, the main topic at hand and speak um, to us about what Guru, Rinpoche, what Guru Rinpoche's prophecies were concerning the activity of the 17th Karmapa. I don't think I've ever heard that presented. Um, and if this is the time and place... And there's something to say, please. <laughs> Tuyemebandawari, <laughs> Well, that brings up the issue of uh, the fact that the um, fulfillment of prophecies can sometimes be inhibited by negative circumstances. So sometimes in some of his prophecies, Guru Rinpoche will say, at best, this will happen, if not that, this, and if not that, this, and so on. The principal prophecy uh, of Guru Rinpoche, uh, as discovered by the Chetan Chukcha Lingba, concerning the 17th Karmapa, is that he will be inseparable from the, uh, the present Situ Rinpoche, which would mean under ideal circumstances, um, staying with him. But certainly their minds uh, are inseparable. Uh, they have mixed. In our uh, karmic in our world of karmic appearances, they don't appear to be able to spend too much time together, but the, their minds have mixed. That's the principal one. Mm. Mm. Da Pema, Pema de la Lavura, Dumpo Pema Ninja Wombo. 
Pema Konzan, Pema Onchur Jopo, De Pema Tamare, De Jire, Tendere, Dona De Chichi Chen and Drop Down, Pema Shire, Pemi Send and Shire, Pemi Jamare, De Tamare. Ten in the Capsula Pena, Chichi Chen and Drop Down, Pemi Jatin, just saying with Capsula Pemi can say your Batiganga Day, Gordon Bojik and Namdur in Sanasuna, Gordon Bojitoba. Te yendo kapsula ta tanda jama kama bachyoda pa ojin dondo tene tojin da wakin yena yam. Te ne ojin dondo tene tojin se tu ngudu kan sen ngudu ta iya me pa yin se ne pena ta te long nan le yore vas. Te yendo ta tok choko kong o le yawa mando vas. Nika ngudu re de wari. Ta tanda nikora pema tohyo nji je se ne den da wakin yena ta pa yin me ke je. ขอรับจากเด็กงานนี้ถ้าทำมันได้วัดได้ส่งอะไรมาเยี่ยมสังเกตการจ้างเจ้าเสมอนับตัวสังเกตเองขอรับกุศลได้วัดได้เป็นเ
that you've not realized your own nature. Because that's the source of all of the other things that we do that we need to confess. It's all caused by our ignorance. You, you don't know you. Yeah. Keep going who I am. Yeah, you don't know who you are. <laughs> And uh, this one is a little bit more involved. Um, hello, Rinpoche. You mentioned that you are not as great as the Terrachin Barwe Dorje. Yet, in the commentary of the Nundro practice, <laughs> Lama Yeshe states you are as different as Terrachin Barwe Dorje as a person is different from whom they were yesterday, which is very That's Lama Tratop. I'm the translator. I'm just reading the yeah, question. Yeah, I know. Okay. Because uh, if I were to say that, that would imply that I can tell which oh. would be arrogant on my part. But Lama Trato really can tell, so he can say it. Well, you were the translator, so I guess yeah, that's where I get, they got I that. get blamed, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so the, uh, the statement is that you are as different as Terchin Barwe Dorje as a person is different from whom they were yesterday, mm -hmm. which is very minimal. Mm -hmm. Do you say so in order to not confuse people and have them foster faith and devotion based on the wrong premises? meaning they become attached to the idea of who you are as opposed to the teachings you are conveying so mm. selflessly. Okay. Dear Ella, Rumba Shekhe Dering Son Sons, the Techen Baba Dorje Ke Chewe Yenten In Ana Sonva Najin Yoritz, Nala Dit Son Do Son Sons, In Ana Lama Tato Ke Ngunro Ke Chika Nam De Son Bari, Data De Badu Rumba Shekhe Kutring Son Ba De Dam, Tetchen Bawe Doje de Pena Soso Rang Kasong Rang Dang Dering Rang Nanjes Chepa Zoguna Zoya Yorimato Momola Chepa Tane Yomaris Mompo Song Dos. They in the Rumbache Song de Song Gombache Rebe Mige Lokta Mashova Geledo Song Patsam Yene Kanda Rebe Tate Namatato Kanga de Tunga Kanga Maricona. He said, "This the, says what whatever Lama Tratop said is Lama Tratop's problem, not mine." <laughs> he said, "You can ask him." Um, thank, thank you for the teachings, uh, Rinpoche. I have a question. Well, I have two questions. One is. Um, it seems to me that if if one actually had perfect faith. That, that you would reach enlightenment. Um, so my question is about doubt. And, and not about, um, I guess it is about, uh, to some extent, doubt uh, about your guru, but it's more inward directed mm -hmm. in the sense that it, if we're not intellectualizing, because I can say, uh, yeah, I have Buddha nature. Mm -hmm. Sure, I get it. Mm -hmm. But but the experience of it is not that. Mm -hmm. So, what does one do with doubt, mm -hmm. and how does one counteract that? The depa the chatsam wa yena sanje ke gopang thoge re so. The indu ngatso ke tetsu miapa the baje drama re so. Morong la yena the lama la tetsu mzanga mendo the morong range ngo. This is Yimbo Yimbala Tetsum Zangis. Caridin Morong and Yam Yola, Morong de, this is Yimbo Yopa Gazopdamandos. The Tetsum de Saya Cario. That day and they get Chapanan, the Sabos on the wall. Lasso. Then the Sabos on the wall. Ton the la does Lama la Tetsum never did it, the Yoba Yena. Then they Chapanan, the Chetanga, that hung it, never so in the Manhoa and Tolo Yanda was on the wall. Well, Rimshe first said, well, that's dealt with in the confession when it says, confess the infraction of not realizing that awareness alone is the single pervasive nature of samsara nirvana beyond division or partiality. And I said, well, that, that's nice, that will purify the, if there's karmic repercussions from our not believing in our Buddha nature, that will help with that, but it doesn't resolve our doubt. And he said, well, you resolve your doubt by gaining experience through praying to the guru. Yeah. 
Well, this might be obvious, but um, since the questions, uh, one of the previous questions said we should have the lung to uh, be able to do the practice, would Rinpoche sometime please give us that so we can do the practice? <laughs> yeah, at the end of um, uh, tomorrow afternoon, he'll give the lung. And then someone uh, watching the webcast wants to know if they can receive the lung via the webcast. It'll do, we'll have to make do with that for now, so people can, can practice it. Can do the practice. But um, it would be good if uh, Rimshe said when, when, when he or Lama Trata visit the center, one of them can give the loan. Thank you. Um, really, it wouldn't matter except that we think it matters because we're dualistic. And if you receive the lung while watching a webcast, you will think, I didn't receive that lung in person. I only saw it via the webcast when I was thousands of miles away. I don't think it's the same. So because you don't think it's the same, it, it could impede you. So therefore, it's best if those who receive the lung uh, via the webcast, also receive it when Rumshe said when either he or Lama Chotop is available to give it. Thank you for your teaching, Rinpoche. I had a question about um, Guru Rinpoche uh, gave the prophecy about the crown in the form of a Haruka while in the celestial realm of Akanishta. Mm -hmm. Is there a connection between that and the fact that Haruka appears in the name mantra of this mm -hmm. practice? That the Guru Rinpoche gave the Digi Teaching Long Ten Ba Dao, so the Pema Trondro Ge Long Ten Nao E Kapsa Haruka E Nam Ba Te Ong Men Do Song Ba Des. De Dao Da Ta Te 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 Chen Ba Wa Jo Ji Ge Tseng Ak Na Na Shri Haruka Ya Ba De La Drawa Ywa. You could say it's connected, um, but the reason, the specific reason why uh, why Shri Heruka is in the is the name mantra is because it's part of the name of Techum Baba Doje, because Traktung uh, uh, is the first part of that name, so it's Pal uh, Traktung is Sri Heruka. Don't give it to her. Uh. Is this practice available in Pecha form? Yeah. It is? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, the Tibetan only is is in the the long the long one, and then the English one is eight by eleven. Okay, is that available in the bookstore? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and I had a question earlier. There was mention of snow and ice symbolize the rigidity of illusion. Just in that case, he's not saying that snow and ice are right. bad. Right. Right. No. But in that case, and then water, I, I missed it, but I wrote aware mind. Water symbolizes. It, it's about the non-duality of samsara and nirvana. The non -duality. That they're both water, but different in form. OK, thank you. Again, from the webcast, Rinpoche, um, can please ask Rinpoche to elaborate on the actual nature and function of Bhadra chains? 
Te toga ke doji logu ju se wa de so karere. Danda danda kaien ba pen pen ba kare ya ba. Te 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 shi ni mo ke ta. Da kaien ma la na ke de de de. Ta te ma on pa la kale la he jo ga do. Ke ta ke logu ju se hen te na. Ta par ma che pa la. Ko ra jam ni te ni ke ju se hen da wala logu ju se hen. Um, we'll talk about this at some future time. I mean, he really will, but okay. not now. It's, so it's in depth. Sounds like it's. So it's okay. <laughs> That take out Danda Nomate, Dequa Mayambati, Data, Masumba Gijits and Data Labna Gajede. Masumba Gijits and Tabde Wochi Labna. The custom, the tradition, is that the uh, only way that you can actually teach that stuff is by really teaching it. There's no point in just talking about it. And so. It, yeah. And so Rimshe said it's it's customarily that preceded by a lot of purification practice. Um, there's no they said there's not much custom of teaching it publicly. And then also, um, is this guru yoga practice intended for those who have completed nundro? Within the Terchin Barway Dorje lineage? The the Ladrup, the Nyonsa Lampala, Domboge, Rigsin Mundro, Chatsan, or Tapu, Gogidoe. On the short tongue, Yona, somebody. No, sir. Short tongue, men, a lamina, your Chabak. If, um, that you can get the cutting young names over in a tatel and hondo de Hona Mandona, Savany in the digament of cell. <laughs> if someone is uh, practicing the um, the ngundro, uh, then it's very good if they can practice it before doing this. But if someone is not going to practice the ngundro, then they can practice this without doing the ngundro first. Rimshay said. I think that the insisting that every single Dharma practice can only be done if you've done a complete Ngundro first um, is unnecessarily prohibitive. Thank you. Get that. It's almost like making it, putting obstacles in people's way, impeding their, their, their doing good things. Thank you, Rabbi Jay. There's somebody behind there who I can't see. There's the original Barway Dorje. Um, their teacher, there is, I haven't, I'm not familiar with the teacher of Barway Dorje. And um, I wondered how that worked, that he created a guru practice for himself <laughs> without acknowledging the teacher of himself. Or how does that because work? Because people asked him to. I'm going to take this, otherwise he, you know, because uh, somebody asked him to. There are also Goryogas for other people that he wrote. You know, he didn't say, oh, no, 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 my teachers are rotten. I'm better. I'm going to write a Goryoga just for me. No, no. They asked him to. Okay. His disciples asked him to because he was their teacher. So they wanted a Goryoga of him. I mean, his, the, the, he had many teachers, typically, principally two, the uh, ninth Taishitu Rinpoche, Pema Ninja Wompo, and Chokchur Dechen Lengpa. Okay. 
but also the Dabzang Rinpoche, the 14th Karmapa, and many others. But they all had Guru Yogas. Thank you. Thank you for your teachings, Rinpoche. You're welcome. Uh, you had said that inanimate objects like bridges um, can manifest nirmanakaya. No, they can be manifestations of manifestations. Nirmanakaya. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, then I was misunderstood. Yeah. Because well, no, they can also like relics can produce more relics. That's manifestation nirmanakaya. Does that imply that they also have intention and sentience? Also, semya pomarwa. You know, and then join you, not the younger man. No, no. Nyama, Nyama, no fun, he had the nice car go, egg, Sansa Ganga, the sea go, Sosa Ganga, the sea, you meant him in his initial yard of us, Yaman. But uh, Buddhas don't have intention as we know it. Like the sun doesn't think I'm going to shine more over here than over there, and I like this, this place, and so on. It's a natural response to the, to the topology or topography, sorry, of the environment. In the same way Buddhas naturally emanate. That's why, you know, Gampopa in his Jewel Ornament says, it defines Buddha activity as the, the non-conceptual or not, not unthinking benefiting of beings. Thank you. Conception is not It says once it, well, something has to be based on, on thinking or concepts, it won't get very far. Then the ending I get from my tell like Chabadan Papa to go somewhere. And the Koran Mitchell Chabadan Minghid in the Latakaya Tonamadu Samadosin, Yering Chadaman what they do this. Because then if Buddhists thought, then they would think the way we do. You know, this one's my disciple, I'll benefit them more. This one doesn't have much faith in me, I'll benefit them less. It's not like that. Are you out of questions? I have, have time for I have another question. Okay. 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 Could you um, talk a little bit about the nature of sentience? Well, that's what Buddhism is all about. Well, I that's the nature of sentience. If I translate it into Tibetan, it's the same word as the nature of mind. Okay. So, do you want him to talk about the nature of mind? Not today. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the question. It is the question. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this will be the last one. You said the cause of uh, Buddhahood is the combination of devotion and also of compassion. Didn't say the cause, cause, but what um, the path that the leads path to Buddhahood it. is um, a combination of, he said, faith, and compassion. Yeah. Faith towards um, the guru. Uh, is that both the root guru and mm -hmm. the own nature of the mind? That the Sanje je gopan tope lam ge so de de pa da ninje de nire sanje. De ninje ge yul de sanje re de pe ge yul ge so zave lama da jube lama nambare ke tanra re. That so on da wo de that said that, yes, the main objects of faith are the root and lineage gurus. And sometimes it's also put as that the, the, the path to awakening consists of uh, a wisdom that transcends uh, the extreme of uh, uh, samsara by seeing the nature of things and compassion that transcends the extreme of nirvana by a caring for sentient beings. 
but that wisdom is actually gained through faith. So it comes down yeah. to the same thing. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rinpoche, does the fact that ha Haruka is part of Teratum Barwe Dorje's name imply that a primary part of his activity is wrathful? Mm. Well, uh, not necessarily. The word heruka, you know, is often explained on a public level as a wrathful deity. But it actually, I mean, they are typically in iconography, but heruka is not about wrath. It means, um, uh, I mean, the, literally the term probably came from someone who shouts hey. So it means someone who raises a, a ruckus. But uh, it's also understood, the ru is understood as meaning rakta or blood. So it gets translated into Tibetan and, and also, I believe, into Chinese as traktung uh, or blood drinker. What it, and blood represents attachment here. So. If we define dharma as supreme among all that is free of attachment, a heruka is an awakened being that, that um, consumes your attachment, that you know, kind of like drains the attachment that keeps you in samsara. So in other words, removes the cause of suffering. Any, is that it? Thank you, sir. So we'll conclude with the dedication and aspirations. Daya tham ke zabane tham ne ne be dana pan ye ga na ke bala chupai. Sip <laughs> ไม่พอดูนี่กุนดอมเผาอะไรครับท่านเจ็ดเดตันเดนจูเจงินโรท่านเจตัดโตตงบาราชัวกันสมบัติกันดอสอชูมาตัดกันมอลมอนโรบา